The truth is, I think there is a substantial amount of apathy throughout the country on this particular issue. Not saying that it's a good thing, not saying I approve of it. I wish people were more informed, more passionate about this issue. But overall, I think there's a substantial amount of apathy about the shutdown and unfortunately about the border as well. Now, those of us that are political geeks that eat, uh, eat and breathe this stuff every single day like me, like probably a lot of you are if you're watching my show, that's something that's hard for us to understand. But we have to accept the fact that there is a, a, a fairly significant amount of complacency when it comes to the border. And they don't see it as necessarily something to get all up in arms about and to shut down the government. However, the interesting thing about all this is there's a fair amount of apathy about the shutdown as well. And when you're talking about the border, unless you're a political nerd or you are somebody that actually lives on the border and feels the direct effects of loose border laws in a very direct and personal way, typically you're not super informed on that issue. But when it comes to the shutdown, there are very few people, except for federal employees, who tend to vote overwhelmingly Democrat anyway, that are really up in arms about the shutdown either. And the longer it goes on, the more people are realizing, yeah, the government being shut down really isn't that big a deal. It's really not affecting my life in any personal way. There's not a sense of panic. I'm not freaking out about this whole thing. And so there's a lot of apathy when it comes to the shutdown, and that apathy actually grows the longer that the shutdown goes on, because the longer it goes on, people are like, huh, it's really not that bad. It's kind of like when you get into a shower and you're anticipating the water being very hot. And so immediately your reaction is, you know, stay away from the water a little bit. You may back up a little. And over time, it just kind of gets to where it's, it's, not really feeling all that hot to you anymore. Your body adjusts itself to that environment. And so that's what we're seeing here is that people, even people that were afraid of the government shutdown and were freaking out about it, once they realize that the federal government really doesn't have a very vital role to play in their day-to-day -day life, they started to realize, yeah, the government shutdown really isn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. And that also means that it paints the politicians that caused it, Republican and Democrat alike, as not necessarily being nearly as uh, careless as they thought it was because the consequence of them not funding the government isn't as bad as they originally thought. Now, again, I think that the government does need to reopen. I'm hoping that that happens soon, but I do think that this fight is absolutely worth having and worth shutting down the government for a few weeks for, and I don't think that the fallout on that has been terrible when it comes to that. And actually what you're looking at and what we're seeing from a political standpoint is the theory that I just proposed, that the longer it goes on, the less upset people are about the shutdown and the more people see, yeah, maybe this fight was worth having. That actually is playing out in real time when it comes to the numbers. So, ex for example, uh, if you're looking at this, the stats show that Trump is actually, oddly enough, winning the fight when it comes to the shutdown, because the longer the shutdown goes, the less people blame him for it. So on December 17th, there was a poll that showed 54% of Americans blamed the president for the shutdown. Yesterday, it was only 49%. That's a six-point drop. Sorry, a five-point drop. So you're looking at the majority of, of Republicans by a decent margin, not a huge margin, but a decent uh, margin saying, yep, Trump's to blame for the shutdown. He's the one that screwed up. He's the one that's responsible for this. He's the one that's being unreasonable. And so he's the reason for the shutdown. That's starting to drop to where actually less than half of Americans blame the president for the shutdown now. And then that same poll that I was talking about on December 17th, so right around the beginning of the shutdown talk, uh, taking place, you had 24% of the people actually blame Democrats, while 33% did yesterday. See, now that's a, a substantial increase. That's a nine-point increase, which anytime you're nearing the 10% mark, that's really significant in politics. And so what we're seeing here is a decreasing in the amount of Americans that blame President Donald Trump for the shutdown and an increase of people that are starting to blame the Democrats. And the longer this goes on, the more that trend seems 
to work itself out. And now the president is down, of course, today on the border, making that case and, and doing so with the cameras. I think that that actually may move the needle a little bit more in his favor. The address last night, I don't think is going to move the needle that much. The only thing that I may be sort of underestimating is that even though there was no new information when it came to either the president's address or the rebuttal, it was, it was not stuff any of us hadn't heard before. Yet we've never heard it because we're paying it, or we've heard it before because we're paying attention. You may be dealing with some people that because it was a primetime address, even though they've not been keeping up with the issue, may not have even known that the government was shut down, that they saw that address last night and that it perked their ears up and they paid attention because it was something that was happening in primetime. Now, that was certainly true back in the day when you only had a few TV stations. I don't think that that's necessarily nearly as impactful now as it was back then. But nonetheless, there are probably some people that the stats that the president gave, that's the first time that they've heard that information. It's the first time they've heard how bad it is on the border and how many murders and sexual assaults and violent crimes have been committed by illegals. And so because of that, because this is new information to them, this is something that they had not anticipated previously, I think at that point you may have some people that are like, maybe the president isn't being nearly as unreasonable as I originally thought. And so maybe that moves the needle a little bit in his favor because the exchange last night, I do think that he actually wound up winning it. I thought that uh, uh, Senator Schumer and, and Representative Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi now, were they just came off as it being all feelings based and they tried to make emotional appeals, but it didn't really work out. And it was it was more... It's funny that Chuck Schumer accused the president of a temper tantrum, but if you were watching it just last night, again, I'm trying to take myself out of the the mindset of a political analyst for a second and just Joe Blow, who happens to be watching primetime TV and sees the presidential address on and watches it. I, I got to tell you, if I'm coming in as an outside observer that hasn't really been following it and looking at the two and trying to figure out which one looked angry and which one looked calm and rational – I have to give that one to the president. He had his fa facts, he had his figures, and he did offer a little bit of an emotional appeal, but he didn't do so with malice or anger. Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, they got a little hot under the collar at least a couple of times in their address. They appeared calm for the most part, but if you're asking who was sing slinging the personal insults, that would be Pelosi and Schumer. In fact, even though that there was sort of a backhanded moment where Trump did address Nancy Pelosi and said that there have been some that have referred to the wall as immoral, that could also be viewed as just people that are saying the wall is immoral. Nancy Pelosi isn't the first person to say that. In fact, it was kind of a long time before she jumped on that bandwagon and actually said that the wall itself was immoral. And so again, if you're somebody that's been keeping up with this closely, you know exactly what he was talking about and that Nancy Pelosi did make that statement the other day. But if you're just a regular person that doesn't really pay a whole lot of attention to the news, but happen to see that presidential address, you don't know that. And so because of that, it seems as though the president is the one being more rational and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, they looked more like the ones that were throwing a temper tantrum or were keeping the, the thing closed because of their own, uh, their own desire to not fund the border wall, which seems unreasonable. And speaking of that, this morning, you had the president in a meeting, and Nancy Pelosi and he had a back and forth. And even though I think this was stupid, I would have advised the president not to take this deal, even if she offered it. The president very plainly, and I think this was a brilliant move on his part, he said, essentially, okay, Nancy, and I'm paraphrasing here, I get that you want the border open, but I also want a border wall. And what Chuck Schumer was saying the other night is let's separate the border wall from the issue of the budget. That being said, if I give you what you want and reopen the government in the next 30 days, will you look at doing something with the wall? And she just plainly said no. See, that's what's so hilarious to me about this. They're always trying to portray the Republicans as the ones that are digging in their heels and not willing to budge. The Republicans have offered several different proposals at this point. You had the original $5 billion, You have the uh, 1.7, or sorry, the, um, was it 
1.6 billion offer. You had the 1 billion offer. Um, you had the offer by the president, which laid out a plan, very detailed $5.7 billion for the wall and actually changed the nature of the wall because the, the Democrats had a problem with the price tag. And, and there was some reasonable, uh, logic behind that actually of how the wall was going to work and what the wall was actually going to be. And so the steel wall instead of the concrete wall was, was something that the president was going to be a little bit more flexible on. The Democrat stance at the beginning of this thing is no funding for a wall. The Democrat stance now is no funding for a wall. Every proposal that they've had is let's just do business as usual. Let's just uh, go ahead and pass this continuing resolution and no, 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 no new funding for a wall. And so I actually wish that the Republicans were a little more staunch on this. I wish that they were a little more inflexible on this, but the truth is they've been incredibly flexible on this and proposed several different methods and several different proposals and budgets that would fund the wall and fund the rest of the government as well. And the Democrats have repeatedly said, nope, not going to give any money whatsoever for a wall. Nancy Pelosi joking the other day, I'm only going to give $1 for the wall. And so again, if I'm not a political analyst, if I'm just trying to dip my toe in the water here and take a look at what the Democrats are doing, because I don't know this particular news story interests me or something. I'm looking at the Democrats saying that we're not going to budge. And I'm seeing the Republicans proposing several different bills to try to, to try to satisfy the Democrats and them repeatedly saying, Nope, 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 not going to do it. 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 Well, then the Democrats especially for someone that's not super informed on this issue, they come off as the ones that have just not budged and, and been completely unreasonable. And unfortunately, I think even if you are informed on the issue at this point, they still come off as the ones that are being completely unreasonable. Republicans on this government shutdown, in my opinion, they need to stay strong, stay calm, continue to look like the adults in the room, and let the liberals freak out that their precious federal government that they can't live without has been shut down for a couple of weeks and the world is still turning. That's really the method that we should be using here. That's the strategy that I would employ. Because the longer that happens, the longer it takes out, the more it looks like the Democrats are cutting off their nose to spite their face. And the numbers bear that out. The longer this thing goes on, the more people are blaming the Democrats, not Republicans. And part of the reason for that is Democrats and the Democrat base are the ones that get upset about the government being shut down. As a general rule, Republicans don't. We tend to be more self-sufficient, and so it doesn't affect us nearly as much. And so it's the Democrats' base that are going to be mad at the Democrats, and they're the ones that are going to eventually rise up and say, look, just give the man his stupid wall money so that we can open the, the government back up. Republicans are fine with leaving the government shut down for a while, and it's going to be okay. In fact, if you're the average person sitting out there, you've barely even noticed that the government is shut down if you haven't been watching the news. So for the vast majority of Americans, it isn't affecting your life, and the Republicans can let this and continue to let it go on. It's only going to hurt the Democrats. And so eventually the Democrats will have to come to the table with something. I don't know if it'll be necessarily that $5.7 billion proposal, but eventually people are going to get to the point to where you're going to see those numbers. If they continue in the trend that they are, there's going to be more people blaming the Democrats for this than the president or the Republican Congress. And that day is swiftly approaching. If the Republicans will just show a little bit of patience, a little bit of maturity, then really the, I mean, the game is theirs. All they have to do is wait it out. Okay. So y'all know I'm a big stats and numbers guy. So here's some fun facts for you. People that like this video and subscribe to the Tactics Radio YouTube channel are 200% more likely to be satisfied with their internet video content and 400% more likely to have a reasonable, rational conversation about religion or politics with their friends and neighbors. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to this channel have more successful and fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, Another fun fact, 82% of all statistics on the internet are completely made up.